the marriage caused a split from her Griscom family and meant her expulsion from the Quaker congregation. The young couple soon started their own upholstery business and later joined Christ Church, where their fellow congregants occasionally included visiting colony of Virginia Militia Regimental Commander, Colonel, and soon-to-be General George Washington, of the newly organized Continental Army, and his family from their home Anglican parish of Christ Church in Alexandria, Virginia, near his Mount Vernon estate on the Potomac River, along with many other visiting notaries and delegates in future years to the soon-to-be-convened Continental Congress in the political, military leadership of the Colonial Rebellion. Betsy and John Ross had no children. The American Revolutionary War broke out when the Rosses had been married for two years. As a member of the local Pennsylvania Provincial Militia and its units from the city of Philadelphia, John Ross was assigned to guard munitions. He died in 1775. According to one legend, he was killed by a gunpowder explosion, but family sources provide doubts about this claim. The 24-year-old Elizabeth, Betsy, continued working in the upholstery business repairing uniforms and making tents, blankets, and stuffed paper tube cartridges with musket balls for prepared packaged ammunition in 1779 for the Continental Army. There is speculation that Ross was the beautiful young widow who distracted Carl von Donop in Mount Holly, New Jersey, after the Battle of Iron Works Hill, thus keeping his forces out of the crucial turning of the tide Battle of Trenton on the morning of December 26, 1776, in which Hessian soldiers were defeated after the crossing of the Delaware River. On June 15, 1777, she married her second husband, Mariner Joseph Ashburn. In 1780, Ashburn's ship was captured by a Royal Navy frigate and he was charged with treason, for being of British ancestry, naturalization to American colonial citizenship was not recognized, and imprisoned at Old Mill Prison in Plymouth, England. During this time, their first daughter, Zilla, died at the age of nine months and their second daughter, Eliza, was born. Ashburn died in the British jail. Three years later, in May 1783, she married John Claypool, who had earlier met Joseph Ashburn in the English Old Mill Prison. Claypool had informed Ross of her husband's circumstances in death. John Claypool's diary and family Bible was rediscovered 240 years later in June 2020. The couple had additionally five daughters, Clarissa, Susanna, Jane, Rachel, and Harriet, who died in infancy. With the birth of their second daughter Susanna in 1786, they moved to a larger house on Philadelphia's Second Street, settling down to a peaceful post-war existence, as Philadelphia prospered as the temporary national capital, 1790-1800 of the newly independent United States of America, with the first president, George Washington, his vice president, John Adams, and the convening members of the new federal government and the U.S. Congress. In 1793, her mother, father, and sister Deborah Griscom Bolton, 1743-1793, all died in another severe yellow fever epidemic, a disease unknowingly caused by infected mosquitoes. After two decades of poor health, John Claypool died in 1817. Ross continued the upholstery business for ten more years. Upon retirement, she moved in with her second Claypool daughter, Susanna, 1786-1875, in a section of Abington Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Her eldest Claypool daughter, Clarissa, 1785-1864, had taken over Ross's business back in the city. Ross, by then completely blind, spent her last three years living with her middle Claypool daughter, Jane, 1792-1873, in rapidly growing and industrializing Philadelphia. On Saturday, January 30, 1836, 60 years after the Declaration of Independence, Betsy Ross died at the age of 84. 
she was survived by one daughter with John Ashburn, Eliza, and four daughters with John Claypool, Clarissa, Susanna, Jane, and Rachel, and one sister, Hannah Griscom Levering, 1755-1836, who herself died about eleven months later. The so-called Betsy Ross House is a popular tourist site in Philadelphia, but it is still a matter of historical academic dispute whether she actually lived there, as evidence indicates she actually lived from 1776 to 1779 in a house next door that was torn down after the remaining house was designated. 